Hey, what's going on, everybody? I have a special guest here. It's Evan Dudley. He covers UAB for AL.com. What's going on, Evan? Uh, nothing much, man. Uh, glad for having me on. Yeah, I wanted to bring you on. I was trying to get some more insight into Antonio Moultrie, a recent acquired Miami Hurricane. Antonio Moultrie played at UAB for the last four years. I was able to go back and watch his highlights, or I put together his highlight film um, from this past season. So I feel like I got a good understanding, a little bit understanding of what kind of player he is. But what can you say about Antonio? Uh, what kind of player is he? What's he do well? Well, uh, the first few years he was at UAB, uh, he came in as a JUCO transfer, uh, kind of joined his old high school teammate, uh, Fish McWilliams, who's a defensive lineman for UAB uh, out of Pensacola, West Florida Tech, I believe. Uh, uh, but anyways, uh, he played interior lineman the first couple of years, uh, was real productive on that. And then, uh, you know, I guess the best way to explain it was uh, the first day of fall camp, I come in and, uh, you know, the first thing I see is Antonio Moultrie and he is, you know, not to be negative, but he, he was kind of a little bit of a big boy uh, playing the interior. But that first day of fall camp, I saw him. He was lean, mean. Uh, I mean, it just, I mean, a total body transformation. And like that moment, I knew he was going to have a special season. Uh, that was my first fall feature was on Antonio, his body transformation. So, I mean, he can put the work in when he uh, when he has a goal set, he will put the work in. Uh, you saw from playing the interior the first couple of years, he plays the outside edge this year. I am was very productive in it. I mean, you know, you look at just uh, pairing with Alex Rod on the other end, uh, you know, a really good bookend duo. But, I mean, he works hard in practice. Uh, he's got a great attitude on and off the field. And, uh, I mean, he's going to get out there and he's going to produce for you. Did you get a sense on maybe why that happened or maybe what he did to get to that point? Like you said, to, to have this body transformation, what kind of led to this, um, essentially to have one of these years that he that he had? Uh, I think it was just, uh, you know, just a combination of things. He always had kind of a high motor. And, you know, as he was growing more into his body, uh, I think that, you know, the coaches kind of really just talked with him, Nick Gentry and Kyle uh, Tatum. Uh, both of them kind of run that uh, front seven or not really front seven, but kind of the uh, the defensive line. Kyle Tatum's defensive line coach, Nick Gentry, played for Nick Saban in Alabama. He's the outside linebackers coach. They kind of work hand in hand with one another. Uh, and so they kind of took Antonio from the inside to the outside, kind of see what was happening with his body and said, hey, commit to this body change and we'll move you to the outside and we'll see what you can do. And we saw what he was able to do this year. Uh, you know, one of the most productive edge rushers for UAB had a great season and obviously was able to, you know, turn it into having an opportunity to, uh, you know, go to a place like Miami for his final season. What, what do you think you touched on the, the position wise, um, maybe with where, where you saw or what's the best fit for him? Not necessarily maybe even position wise, but just the kind of defense that, that he would excel in or, or what does he excel in um, kind of the role that he's in there? Well, uh, like I said, uh, you know, playing the interior and then playing the edge, he's, uh, you know, he's got a lot of experience doing both now. So he's a, he's a multifaceted player on the defensive line. So you can stick him in a lot of different positions. You can move him from the inside to the outside, you know, disguise a lot of blitzes, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, just a lot of different, uh, you know, looks for quarterbacks uh, to kind of take in, you know, to kind of take into mind uh, before the snap. So, I mean, you can kind of put him anywhere, but I think he works best probably in a 3-4 because you're able to move him a lot more in a 3-4 system, keep him on that interior or move him to an outside. Uh, UAB has always kind of used kind of a multiple 3-4, but this season it really, it really morphed into like a uh, almost a 4-2-6 this year because they ran, you know, they they often started two down defensive linemen and then they started two edge rushers. So they're really running a 4-2 this year, uh, and it's really worked out for them. You can see what UAB has done defensively, and, uh, you know, Antonio Moultrie has been a big part of that, uh, you know, on that defensive line the, these last few years. And I was curious, Evan, when he's, at his, when he's on top of his game, you know, when he's playing well, uh, what what does it look like? What what does he do well? What what are his strengths? When not just so you know where they could place him, but what what does he do well for for a defense there? Uh, I mean, his motor is just really big. I mean, he doesn't take a playoff. He's coming at you every single play, a hundred percent. You know, he's not one of those guys that you know if he's not in the play, he's not going to do any work. You know, he's going to been in there. He's going to do the work. Uh, as we saw from this year, he he he, tur he turned into a really good edge rusher. Uh, you know. Even in the bowl game, he comes off and uh, had two big TFLs early in that game against BYU, uh, just came screaming off the edge. So he's got really good speed, really good speed off the snap as well. So, I mean, you know, you get him into those positions, then he can really make big defining plays like that in the backfield. And, you know, you, you touched on that he was a key part of the defense. So they led the Conference USA in total defense, um, nine and four seasons. So you're talking about a productive uh season for, for UAB. Obviously, you touched on the bowl game. I, I want to get into that because it, 
it, it looked like, you know, the stuff that I saw, just a, a really entertaining game. Um, essentially, you know, stat wise, it looked like it was Antonio's best game with the four tackles for loss. Um, the key plays, especially in the first half, they're just really kind of setting the tone with big plays. Uh, I, I'm curious maybe what you think, Evan, of his upside in terms of you've seen his his kind of career progress. You touched on it started at Juco for the first year, and then he gets to UAB underrated, you know, under the radar recruit out of Pensacola there. What do you think is kind of next for him? Um, you touched a lot about, you know, the improvement you saw for this year, but 2022, you know, what, what do you kind of envision for him? Well, uh, I hopefully envision that he'll be able to get into a, you know, a really good strong rotation with Miami. You know, uh, you know, I've covered this guy for a few years and, uh, you know, as a beat writer, you know, I, I had no claim to UAB. I actually graduated from Alabama, so uh, I'm not a UAB fan. But, you know, I'm a fan of these players, these guys that I cover. You know, I tell these guys stories, so I'm always rooting for them, even if they, you know, leave UAB to go somewhere else. I'm always rooting for these guys. And uh, Antonio is one of those guys I'm rooting for. I'm really hoping he has a really strong season, plays in a really good rotation with Miami, and kind of parlays that into uh, may possibly getting drafted because I think he, uh, I think has a uh, you know a future in the NFL. I mean, we've seen what he can do when he commits himself to a goal. So I mean, you look, you, know, you give him a goal in the NFL. Hey, we need you to play this position right here. He's going to you know work everything he can to do that. And we've seen guys from uh, you know from UAB, actually, uh, you go undrafted, but end up playing uh, very vital roles here in the past few years. You look at Darius Williams, uh, was an undrafted free agent as a starting cornerback for the Rams uh, and has, you know, played really well the last couple of years. Anthony Rush, a defensive lineman for UAB, uh, you know, he's been around a few different teams, but he's been being picked up. Uh, I believe he was with the Falcons the last few weeks of this season and played really well for them. So, you know, there's a lot of under-the-radar guys that come in from UAB, and I think with being at Miami, uh, Antonio's going to get a lot more exposure than he normally would. Uh, you know, no knock on UAB or anything, but, you know, obviously Miami brings a lot of exposure to itself. Uh, so, you know, that's going to bring a lot to him, and that's going to help him in these future endeavors. You touched on maybe his personality. What, what do you kind of – what can you say about him as a person um, as you got to know him a little bit there? I mean, he's uh, as simple as to be. He's just a good dude, man. He's a good dude. Uh, he's easy to talk to. He's got a, you know, got a lot harder approach. You know, he's, you know, he, he he's one of those guys that can click on and off when he's on the field and when he's off the field. When he's on the field, he can be mean, nasty, uh, you know, do all the things that, you know, big defensive linemen are supposed to do. And when he's off the field, he's going to joke around. Uh, you know, he's, he's a polite guy. He's, you know, he was always yes, sir, no, sir with me, even though, you know, uh, maybe 10 years older than him, but, you know, he, he's just a really good guy. He's got a great spirit about him. He's going to be a, you know, he's going to be a good positive locker room presence from Miami is what he's going to bring to. Uh, I want to talk about Christopher Moll too, but first I, I do want to wrap the, I do want to ask about UAB as a program. Um, what do you kind of see about the, maybe the biggest thing that he can take away from being in, at UAB a program in the last four years, maybe the biggest thing, maybe something that's a point of emphasis that they teach their players or just something that can really carry forward for him as, again, he's making that, pro, you know, progressing throughout his career here. Well, one thing with UAB, uh, with Bill Clark, uh, you know, he'll take some of these guys that are on the redder and he can develop them well with his coach and staff. Uh, he, he, they probably do that better than anyone in a group of five. They can take their players, develop them into, you know, you know, really good starters, guys who can play in the NFL, as we've seen. Uh, and with Ant, uh, I mean, what he probably learned and what he can take from UAB is that, you know, a humble beginning, and he's been able to parlay that into a, a great opportunity, and that's something he's not going to forget. He's not going to forget where he came from. He's not going to forget the work he had to put in to get to, you know, where he is now. And that's something that's instilled in all these guys at UAB. Uh, I mean, uh, Coach Clark, he's, there's one thing he loves more than anything, more than the game, more than winning uh, it's it's practice. The guy loves to practice. He loves the camaraderie of practice, and that's something these players love too. They love to practice, and you know, and when in that they practice full speed. You know, these guys are going to you know work their tails off any chance they get. You know, whether in practice or a game. So that's kind of the mentality you're going to get from a UAB player. You know, coming out of UAB, being there for you know a couple of years. Like I said, they go nine and four, so coming through that winning environment there. So Christopher Mole, um, he's a guy that South Florida people um, are aware of. He's a Coral Gables product. Um, I think some people remember the game when, when you know Miami played UAB recently there. Uh, Christopher Mole is, is in the transfer um, portal, uh, a guy that's you know two-time all-conference play, first-team all-conference, led the team of tackles there. Just what, what's your take on him as a player? Um, you know, just what, what have you seen from him kind of uh, with his production, just him as a player? 
Well, uh, he was one of these guys that, uh, you know, started playing in 2017 when the program returned. So I've been able to see him throughout his entire career at UAB. Uh, you know, I knew there was something kind of special about him that first year, just his uh, his play on special teams. You know, he was always in the right spot at the right time. His second year, when you start starting playing linebacker, star uh, safety, uh, you start seeing what he's capable of doing. He's a ball magnet. He's always in the right place at the right time. I mean, he led UAB in tackles for, I think, two years straight, uh, you know, before this last year. Obviously, uh, he got injured in the fourth game. I uh, was not able to finish out the year. I believe it was a, I believe it was a wrist injury, so he was just never able to finish out the year, which is obviously a big disappointment for UAB and, and Chris as well as a good of a player as he is. But, I mean, he's just one of those guys that's got a knack for making plays. He's going he's gonna to get you in the right position, and he's going to be in a position to make a play. And, you know, often he does that. He's done it on special teams. He's done it defensively. And if it's not him making the play, he's setting someone else up for a play. So, you know, this is a guy who's got multiple years of experience in college football. He's got, you know, I, I, at least the 300 tackles career. I have not, I, I don't remember the last time I looked at his career numbers, but it's got to be at least 300 tackles. Uh, the guy's just a tackling machine. And, uh, you know, he's got a good spirit. And, I mean, if he was able to go to Miami, uh, end up at Miami, you know, I think that would be great. I'd be really happy for him because that's his hometown. You know, I did, a, you know, I've done a couple of features on him. Uh, uh, you know, I've been to Miami a few times. You know, I've had the Cuban coffee. Uh, I remember them bringing me a cup one time. Like, why the little bitty one? Just give me the cup. No, no, it don't work that way. So, uh, learned a lot from Chris and, uh, you know, have a lot of love for that guy. And I just really hope, uh, you know, he ends up at Miami because uh, that would be just a great story with him being able to come home. But he's a guy that, uh, you know, he's going to give you the work that you need. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I just brought him up again just because he's in the transfer portal. My, you know, um, you know, he, it's not like he's declared. It's not like the same situation with Antonio. Mm -hmm. It's just a guy, again, a local guy that's been productive. Um, like you said, the return home would certainly be appealing to him. And we'll see if things work out with Miami or, or, or you know, regardless. Last thing on Chris, though, just the line, you know, linebacker safety, kind of the positions he's kind of played there um, and kind of touch on that a little bit. Well, I think, uh, you know, they really kind of started playing him at a star safety position, then moved him back to linebacker where he had, uh, you know, played in high school a whole lot. And I think just because of his size, uh, you know, they were looking at trying to move him to safety this past year because that might be where he plays more, more on the next level just because of his size. He'd probably project more as a, a safety or, you know, a star, uh, kind of a star safety, you know, an extra safety, nickel safety. So, I mean, uh, you know, I think that was a lot of the uh, idea of putting him in the back end of the secondaries this past year. Obviously, we were not able to see what he could do uh, completely because he only played four games. But we do have some, uh, you know, some film from those first couple of years, uh, excuse me, first couple of years, him playing that star safety role where, you know, he's in position, he's making interceptions, uh, you know, he's tipping balls, he's causing fumbles, you know, he's, you know, he's doing what Chris Mole does. So uh, I think within that, you know, he can play linebacker, he can play safety. So, I mean, he can play the run. He can play the pass and he can rush the passer as well. I think he's got, you know, double digit sacks for his career. So, I mean, he can, he can do a lot of different things defensively for you. He's kind of a, a jack of all trades at this point, uh, as far as a player on the field. Yeah. So Evan, I, I definitely appreciate you taking the time jumping on here. Um, a lot of insight, you know, that's what I was looking forward to, uh, looking forward to the discussion. So I'm glad we were able to link up and do this. So appreciate it, man. Um, a lot of knowledge there. So definitely take care. Uh, glad glad to be on with you, man. Uh, Y'all enjoy Ant, man. He is a he's a pleasure, man. I, I love the guy, and uh, best of luck to him uh, with the Hurricanes, man.